I think I'm going to go ahead and call to order the uh, Joint Finance Committee and Fire and Rescue Policies and Procedures Committee, uh, Tuesday, March 20, 2018, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Main Conference Room, County Administration Building, 1 Center Street, Chatham, Virginia. And uh, let's have a roll call. Okay, for the Finance Committee, Mr. Blackstock. Present. Mr. Davis. Mr. Warren. Mr. Scares. Here. For Fire and Rescue, Mr. Scares? Here. Mr. Barber? Mr. Blackstock? Present. And I will also note that Mr. Farmer is in attendance. All right. Uh, we have a couple items to add to the agenda. The, uh, in consultation with the Fire and Rescue Association, we want to have us review a contract as opposed to titling vehicles. So you, you can't add anything because everybody's not here. Also, oh, I'm not sure we have a quorum at all of that meeting. Oh, right that's right. Yes. Yeah, well, we got we got we got a fire and rescue board. Well, our fire and rescue board, but it's a joint meeting. So we we'll just hold tight to about Yeah, you got to hold tight to somebody gets there. Okay. Well, we'll suspend right. the meeting for five ten minutes. All right. Thanks. Minutes, minutes. I just don't want y'all to do something and be invalidated because we have quorum. Do we have some phone numbers we can call? Bob's on the way. Up. He's on the way. Okay. Yeah, he can sit in and create a quorum in the That means you can the room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're trying yeah. to try get somebody. Yeah, we got to we have some time because it's going to take a while to get you, I suspect. He was on his yeah, way when I talked to him, so. Three of them in the tombs, one's 
Hispanics. Mm -hmm. You know, white and white. And then come off of it. I can. I can't remember. I can't I can't remember. 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 I mean, I've got that in the end of the show. So that's the job of the show. We don't have anything you can do. See, I've got some of that. Then I add it. Then I add it. Yeah. I don't have to. It's going to be squared. It's going to be right. It's going to be faster. And so when you go out into the field, you have a one high level person, but you're going to be a little bit of people looking at that. I think it's through a EMB. Somebody got in trouble already. Yes. He put us in round. We had to make it clear. And then the yeah, it really makes sense that they do it right the first time. So they have to start to redo what they got to do. That's where our guys come in. This guy is fine. Okay. No, no. He was telling about his LA. We got a lot of money. We don't need to take. Okay. Floor or the floor, you know. 
Um, we tweak some of the budget lines in our overall budget, um, and I've been able to do that and stay actually just a little bit under what was proposed. And uh, by moving some budget lines around, there's a couple things that we had not or I had not put in the budget. And one of those uh, was some money for recruitment and retention, and I've been able to free up some money in some other lines if the budget were to go through and uh, put that money in for recruitment and retention. Uh, one of the things came to my attention recently I did not know about, and I see it as a, as a major health and safety issue for our firefighters. Um, currently, not every fire department provides each firefighter with their own breathing apparatus mask. That's a health and safety issue. Um, we have put some money in the budget, in the, um, in the proposed budget that is for uh, to replace air bottles that we have going down. But we also have some folks that have been able to get grant money. So if it happens, we'd like to be able to use that money to, to hopefully remedy that situation because that is a real health and safety issue. Uh, not only that, they can't get fit tested because they don't have their own mask. So you might be fighting fire with not your right size mask. And in this day and age, especially with the cancer risk of fire, we need to make sure we address that. So uh, um, that is definitely one of the issues we have. But there's several other things, and I've worked with, uh, with the association very closely on some of that. Uh, I think we've talked... I probably talk to two or three of them every day about budget and, and so forth. So uh, I can't tell you things that have improved quite a bit. We've been watching uh, our response data. Uh, these guys are really watching their response data. Uh, we are, they question uh, you know, a lot of that, seeing where they can improve. We're down to the nitty gritty. Hopefully working with one or two, maybe three agencies to improve that. I was uh, I couldn't make the budget meeting last night because I had another fire department talking to them about some of that stuff. So uh, things are getting a lot better as far as they go. There's some concerns they have regarding the agreement that I'll let uh, Scotty talk about some of the tithing issues, but uh, I don't think we're far apart on fixing all that. And I can't I can tell you this, it means that we all want to be at the same place, and we all want to get better. Uh, the debate sometimes is how we get there, but we, we're not very far apart from that either. That. Uh, we've had some really good talks about that, and they've come in with really, really good ideas. I told somebody yesterday, I said, all I really do is facilitate. It's <laughs> really what I'm doing. And they're, you know, most of it is their idea. They just never had anybody really give them, give them the help to do that. And so uh, I, I applaud them for what they're doing. And uh, they've treated me great. And I, I love working with my mom, So, But I'll let uh, Scotty touch on some things. And I'll answer your questions. And just make him, make him. Yeah, don't go far. I'm <laughs> Get the NIS form. Yeah, if you want to get that, yeah. Well, the budget, um, I can talk about the budget first. If we could stay within our operation and the budget that Mr. Smithman presented to y'all and let us work with Chris and Chris we work with on the Kevin Admin um, and tweak what we need and stay in that same figure and just tweak what we need to. We greatly appreciate that. Um, so please support our budget overall and keep what the county administrator asks for. And we appreciate the county administrator asking for that. Is that what we want? Um, on the needs assessment, we did visit every fire station, every rescue squad. Uh, the county uh, administrator wanted us to, wanted you all to insure so many fire trucks, so many ambulances. We felt like that it needed to be a needs assessment done across the board. It's going to the county administrator saying, this is how many need to be insured. I don't know how you come up with a, a figure. Uh, we've run some call data and, and done. We felt like that we, as professionals, that do it every day, need to see. So at the last association meeting, uh, President Fowler, and the reason he's not here today, he's at the city working at his battalion team, uh, chief's job. So he appointed, um, along with Chris, was on the committee. It was five of us. Uh, it was Brian Garrett from Cowlins, Ernest Turr from Mount Hermon, Dean, and myself uh, was on the committee. 156 vehicles uh, is what we're currently uh, have on the insurance, and that's not counting um, with the SOT, the trailers and um, stuff that they have, and that's not counting the trailers that we have to haul our ATVs and stuff. We come up with a figure, um, and we have to carry it back to the County uh, Fire and Rescue Association, but we did find cuts. 
I think we found a better plan and to cut more than what the county administrator uh, found. But we're going to present it at the next um, Fire and Rescue Association, and then we will get it uh, to y'all on that. But I think we found some savings and recommendations uh, to present to save this county money. Is that on the insurance? Yes, sir. This is the insurance. So if we pass a budget with the amount of insurance included in here, what you're saying is you think that even though with the changes y'all want to ask us to make, we would still be under budget? Is that what you're telling us? Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. What we recommend is <coughs> to have so many trucks, and if you wanted to have more, um, Mike's here, so it's okay to say yours. Mike's got 14 trucks. And we're saying that the county would insure 10 and he would have to pay four or get rid of four. Just use that as an example. So okay. you're not going to save money. That's my question. Are you going to the limit? Well, we would have to pay for them and get rid of them. The county would pay for them. As four trucks that the county would come, the county would have to pay insurance on. Right, but I thought the limit that we had proposed was seven. Yeah. Let, can, let me just say this. When, and actually, I talked to Mr. Smithson the day y'all went to the budget. He, he said he'd basically throw the figure out three and four, three rescue and four fires, right. which was seven. But in the essence, and I think he'll say what he told me then, he said, Mike, I'll give it was 10 or something somewhere. It just depends. I had that number for that job. Now, let, let me give y'all an example, and this is why y'all voted, and I hope y'all will understand. I talked to Joe Davis about two hours of the day. In essence, the county's made up of 21 fire departments and 12 rescue then you got North Halifax and Dabble comes in, okay? <clears throat> Some of us do it in one. Like Ringo is fire and rescue in the same building. Uh, Thomas for Brawls or Mount Herman, people like that. Some of them like Red and Chatham, you got Red and Fire. They completely separate from Red and Rescue, okay? So I'm just, just saying that. All right, long story short, what we looked at is one, the industrial areas you cover, the population you cover, whether you commercial slash urban, rural, blah, blah, blah. So, long story short, it just depends, and I agree trying to cut it, we're going to cut some too, okay? But I'm saying we need to look at the needs assessment, which Scotty and, and Chris and the team went around and recommended here, because what you run into, everybody's area is different. I'm not calling no names, but for example, it's a rescue squad in our county last year, we just passed 80 calls, okay? And we need that rescue squad, where is that? But they had 80 calls. Our rescue squad got dispatched to 860,069 total from my department. So every one time this truck went out, my trucks go out 10 times. Okay? So I'm just saying, and, and I'm not saying just to us, the Brazil area, Blast, Tunstall areas like that, you've got different developments. I cover three industrial parks. When the industrial parks are working, they employ over 1,000 people. I cover three schools down behind Little Kentucky. When the school's in, you're looking at another 2,000 kids. That's 3,000. My area is already 7,500 people. Plus, we picked up some log road rate. So I'm covering 11,000 people for rescue in Pennsylvania County. What is it, 55,000 in the county? I'm covering 20% of the county. How I many? 64. 64, okay. 11,000 versus 64. We're covering that one building. So that's what I'm saying. Needs assessment. You know, it depends on where you are, where you're located, as you call it, like there's no way I can run rescues in Ringo. One of his three trucks, I tell you. That. One of his, using Mike as an example, two of his trucks, we, one of his trucks is a lighter truck, so I brought it down to nine, and we left him with three ambulances. The reason we left Mike with three ambulances, he has the membership and the call volume that he can get three ambulances on the road at a time. Mike has also agreed if someone absolutely had to have help then he would help us for the ambulance. Along the ambulance. It's the reason we kept him at 10. We have other areas that uh, has four or five trucks. We say they need two with the car lot. And that's what we would say. But we're going to present that to the to the um, Fire and Rescue Association and then we can get it to you, back to you. So, Scotty, out of your needs assessment, you're cutting what y'all got to pay for. You're still cutting 20 some trucks. 23. And then there's some trucks, just like me, I'm going to probably get rid of two. I ain't crazy about it. One I'm getting rid of, I'm 6,000 gallons of water Sunday in a, a, a Columbia fire, regardless of the old truck. So, we'll get rid of a couple trucks. 
And the two I keep, we will pay for it. The insurance. So it's going to cost us about $1,000 a year on our, our fire department budget just to keep them two trucks. But, you know, we do what we got to do. How will that work as far as uh, when you say you pay the insurance? Are you going to get a, I just want to understand as a board member, we, are you going to, are, uh, are you saying you're going to get a private insurance plan? The county is going to be on the county We would like to keep it on the county the insurance, yeah, we'll and we would like it to come off our, and we will pay you for it. We would like for it to come off our block fund. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll pay you back for it, and I'll say the same. We would like that money to come off our block fund if we could do that the legal way. Yeah, you know, I mean, we'll have to explore that. Yeah, I think it can work out. I know other localities that do yeah. stuff like that. So, Scotty, what I'm going to say is overall, from what you all are looking at, you must be falling under a less than an average of seven. Per, per department because you're saying you're lowering the number on the overall expense of the county. Pretty much, yes sir. I mean, we got fire trucks that's sitting outside with no water in it, it's not ready to go, roll, it, it run, you know, run no calls or run, in three year average we got some call, trucks that run two calls, seven calls, uh, eight calls, 16 calls, you know, that's not feasible. Um, this one truck that I'm saying is sitting outside in the last three years, it cost us eight thousand dollars to put tires on that truck, and you know that's that's a lot of money to just sit outside, and it's costing this county a lot of money. <coughs> and I know some of you got phone calls, um, phone calls on it. Um, I'm looking for Mr. Scares here, um, and you know we've all got phone calls and stuff on that. You have two, Mr. One. <laughs> so. But at the end of the day, we we'll try to bet our process. We won't count. You want accountability from us? We got to stand up. We need accountability, and that's what we want. So you still need approval uh, through the fire and rescue. We want to present it to the fire and rescue, and present it back to you. But working with Chris has been awesome. We don't always go get along, but at the end of the day, we do. Uh, the next is the, is that answer all the insurance information? You want to join in? No, I think you didn't. Is that yeah. it? Any questions on the insurance? I, I want to do one. There are, yeah, there's one thing I'll say. Uh, I have been an insurance agent, and I wrote a white paper on insuring your fire rescue department if you would like to read it. Uh, the, uh, the insurance really, honestly, is going to be, we will be okay with that because uh, already, all our fire rescue partners are named insured under our policy, as well as the county. So there's very little that's got to change on any of that, other than just breaking out the train. Yeah, we One other thing, but it's not good. We are meeting <coughs> Tuesday at lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, Dean and myself and Chris is meeting with the. Connie's uh, coming with us too. Uh, I'm not meeting them. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Connie and Connie, we meet with the uh, insurance company and some of the trucks that we can adjust the value of the trucks to help say some trucks is, um, should have been adjusted. Um, the, the departments have told us, um, or, and apparently it didn't get changed um, for some odd reason, and so we hope to get that changed to say. Um, I guess the next thing is a service agreement that uh, the county airman um, administrator has. It was 11 agents represented at our workshop Saturday. I'm going to call it a workshop. And also one of the water supervisor, Mr. Scarris, attended our workshop. When the question was asked, how many would sign this agreement, how many hands went up, Mr. Scarris? <laughs> I didn't see one. Well, we're worried about it. Did, though, didn't, he? didn't Dean raise uh -huh. We're a little worried about uh, several different items. We want to be have accountability. Um, at our last association meeting on the response time, we did move our response time. In the past, we said call covered, and it could take <coughs> over how many minutes to get an ambulance on the road. I made the motion personally if you couldn't get an ambulance on the road within 15 minutes, did you turn it over to someone else? 
The motion was second. The motion passed. We tried to get that down to 12 minutes. That's what our goal is to work. We do not have a lot of the buildings. We don't have living quarters. So our members do not stay at the firehouse or the rescue squad. Our board members at the fire and rescue agency are worried about signing a service contract agreement um, because some of the legal they they don't want our members running 100 miles out for liability going to the buildings because of this response time, eight or ten minutes or whatever's in this agreement. Um, We just don't agree with this service contract. We would like to, we want to be held accountability. We want to work with Chris each, and we review our calls every month. We present to y'all each month, which each agency is performing. And we have a standard on the spending, on what we allocated, and have a breakdown. Can I make, can I make a suggestion? I understand your concerns, but I think what we, I know I as a board member would rather have is for y'all to sit down with Chris, and even though we may not in the end agree with it, staff or the board, but we have a working document that you're comfortable with to start with to bring to us that we can sit down and go through. And, we ha and if we have any, based on what's here, Use this as a working document instead of saying we've got problems with this, so we know specifically what it is, and we have a working document. But basically, y'all get with Chris and sit down and come up with a document that you're comfortable with. We already have a document. Then we can work through the differences as to what the board and the administration can tolerate. That would be my suggestion. We pull that. Yeah. Well, let me jump in here just a second. Um, so, uh, Mr. Smith, we tweaked that document quite a bit. Uh, I think part of the fear from the agencies is uh, signing that, they feel there's still some liability on their side for some of the things that is required under that. Uh, because it's more of a contract, they feel, it's, and so there's some legal standing to that. Um, so, uh, I don't think anybody disagrees with some of the things we want, it's just how we do it is where the issue is. So, we can do that. Um, Maybe it'll work a couple of different ways. I'd have to work with Maiden on that to see if we could do it other than make it sound so much like a contract, maybe. Or even if we don't do that, if we just came up with a, a new board spending policy on that, we'll do some of that. We can work there. But I think it's the contract issue that there's all that there's a lot of fear about. So that that's where we're hung up more than anything is that be fair to yeah. I think. So it's not so much some of the things in it. In fact, some of the things they were even going to be a little tougher on, I think. But it's just that contract where signing off is. What if we made it a memorandum uh, of agreement or something? That's yeah, I think that'd be something yeah. like that. I think that'd be a lot better too. Yes, sir. Yes, I think that would be great. Yeah. We definitely want to work with Chris <coughs> to answer that question. <coughs> yes, sir. I, I, yeah, I, I, I just have one question. I, I know during the presentation we made, and most all of you all have been out there when we've done the town halls. Mr. Blackstock's district, we've done one in nine, we've done one in Dr. Miller's, we've got five more, I think, together. But, uh, you know, there's been one segment of that that's talked about somewhere out in the future that we may have quick response teams throughout the county to, to make, to possibly make the situation better to stabilize. My question is this, uh, when I understand about getting there and getting an ambulance on the road. But I believe I'm correct when I make this statement. In particular, I've seen it in our district, Ernest, is that uh, a call comes in, goes out on the radio. One of your guys may get to the site and go in and start. There's no way to account for that. That's yeah, that's where, I, that's where I'm going is, with, do we have a mechanism where, I mean, because, look, if it takes 15 minutes, with the based on system we have today, there's no way to, no to way count that. And well, that's, that's one of you know, I'm concerned, do. one of the guys, like, like in the Mount Herman community, it happens often, one of the guys will get there, he'll start the stabilizing, 
which is so important in that first 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes. You know, and then they bring the ambulance, it may be 15 minutes. Mr. Warren, it's happening yeah. throughout the county. Uh, sometimes it's called in, uh, for lift assist. If I run a mutual aid call for Callens and we call for lifting system for Callens Fire Department, that's different from the rescue squad. We call it for the fire department to assist us. Well, they don't respond to fire truck, they just come on the personal vehicle. Well, that's not counting them as a call. Well, they answer. So our CAD system is not counting them as they answer. I guess what I'm saying, Chris, is I, I would like to see us try to work toward a, a, a situation where there's some some leadway in there if we got a if we got a guy that pulls up on a truck he's got all the equipment there you know him being there in eight minutes I'm, I'm tickled to death y'all might get there with the ambulance in 15 you saying the first train person there to yes, start or evaluate the scene right I mean he gets ahead of the game and he yeah. never started working into the I mean it's nothing but he's giving CPR yeah. I mean, it might be the difference in making it that happen. Happen. Yeah, that does, and, and that is one of the issues, and as, as I come I've been here, the more people think some of the things I find is we're doing that. We just don't have a way to, we've never been able to track it because the CAD system is kind of out of do It's well, not, it's not, well, but so we're working to figure out how to do that. That's already in the Well, way. I guess what I'm saying is, I, you know, I've, I've been really looking at the, the numbers more closely as mm -hmm. this process started. Months and months ago, and Ernest and I had some conversations, but my, my point being is we talk about a response time sometimes of being 20 minutes, and the response time really could have been six minutes because the first on the scene is, was already doing something. There's no so way to put a note in anything. We're working for that. I've, I've been talking with uh, 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 Ronnie and uh, uh, in our cab. He kind of manages the cab, and we're trying to figure out how to, how to do that best. Because we do have situations, and I'll pick on Renan. Renan is one of those where they call for lift assist, and a couple of guys will go in a personal vehicle, help the rescue squad load them. But it never really looks like that agency because we go by the response of, or we look at the response of their fire truck. So we're trying to figure out how to do that and see what our cat, I think, was going to want to do. We've got to bring our cat to the down, actually sit down and work. Is there any way you can just, do they, most everybody have a radio? Yeah, everybody. Well, they didn't do that. It's just it's not. There's no where the cats ever been tracked because we track, by, we track by the fire department. It doesn't show trucks. Like we get dispatch yeah. that shows mm -hmm. say rescue 231's in route, and it gets on the scene. I might have 2302. That'd be my sister chief. Get on the scene. Rescue 231. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But I'm inside, I'm looking, I got a cardiac arrest, I got a trauma, I need a helicopter, you know, but I can go ahead and start planning ahead. You know, that's 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 a way. Way. Yeah, no, but that's a good point. But that is a very bad They have people that are not credible. But I think Chris's goal and our goal on the Leadership in the Fire and Rescue Association is to give y'all monthly reports on our response yeah. time and, and, and our standard and, and see and with the agents that are struggling we go see where we can help them. Yeah, I, I think it would be wonderful to get the response times and then first on scene times if we can get that work yeah. out. That'd be Chris, would you email those out? I mean, yeah, we can do I that. I think that's something yeah. simple you can do. Yes, sir. Tell well, that's one of the things we've been talking about in the association is looking at those months because one of the other issues that comes up and it's a very, very valid point. You may, you could have a truck go out the door right now as soon as the call goes out. But if let's say it's attempted suicide, you have to stage until law enforcement gets there. So that skews your own yeah. scene. Yeah. So I told myself we start need, we need to look at those exemptions so I can pull those out because that's not an accurate right. thing of what's going on. So you know we've had some. I think uh, Brian, did you have one that was a four-hour staging? Right. And so that really skews your numbers. Yeah, yeah. So we, but we can pull those out and fix that. So yeah, that's. Uh, one of the things, you know, one of the other things that kind of hog ties us a little bit is we don't have a true central reporting for fire and EMS reports. So if I needed to look at a fire report to maybe see if there was a problem or read one, I don't have access to that because everybody has their own. And I, I put that on down the line in the budget for, for, for on down the line a couple of years to try to come up with one centralized reporting system for fire and EMS so I can have that information at my fingertips too. So, uh, but. Uh, uh, yeah, there's some things as far as getting data. It's not it's not way off, but there's things we just <coughs> I'm, I'm aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I certainly I I think it's critical to get that data compiled because I, my my daughter was involved in a serious car accident uh, last year, and not only were the two ambulances there, there was probably ten other vehicles that had responded. I don't know when they got there. I'm sure they got there before the ambulance, but you can't get that data compiled, it, it kind of short changes the fire departments that are responding and those volunteers and I think the more we can do to advertise how, how well those volunteers are reacting, I think that, that's, more, that's important for the citizens as well. So. Yeah, I think we need to get it out to our members and also to y'all also, it needs to be monthly. So, and I think we got personnel that can do that, that can do that at, at dispatch so. And, and I think, like Scott is saying, and, and we want to get better, and we want to work with the county and make it what it needs to be, and I think everybody's headed that direction, and that's good. Uh, but, you know, the other side of the fence, when the first day I met David Smith and Jim Davis, we talked about accountability. And I think all of us in here, we've had departments running 20, 30, 40% of the calls, and you just seen in the paperways jumped up maybe 50 to 60s and getting better, and you won't people would be held accountable. So if you take our reports every month and look at them and say, well, hey, Mike, you might need some help with Ringo, or he may need some help with Cool Brands, that's good. You, you're putting us on our toes, okay? And then we need to be held accountable. But then going forward, we want definitely y'all to help us and fund us. You know? Yeah. Because the citizens ain't going to keep a donating to you if you're not getting out the door. Yeah. So why does the county want to keep putting money in if you're not getting out the door? All right. Any other questions on that before we go to the title of the vehicles? Please? You got the table? Um, we got a vehicle that's being delivered in the day in Pennsylvania County um, that's being bought for yeah. some of the money from $100,000 um, and it's going to re Mr. Blackstock's district. Um, it may be non. Mason's district. He's paying about three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars yeah. for the truck, and, and the candidate's paying a hundred of that. Um, we got a concern of titling the vehicle to Pittsburgh County and to Lena. Um we would like to go into agreement um, versus a title. Joint title. I'm going to explain it, Chris. In front of you, we got uh, Camel County Board of Supervisors agreement that uh, we're trying to, uh, we just received yesterday, Chris did, 
and also that you give them a copy of the, yeah, or the, copy of the Pennsylvania County Fire and Rescue contract. The, the, uh, what you, did you get a copy of this ball? I did. Yeah. I just got it. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> well, in, in this for uh, Campbell County, I didn't obviously just We just got it yesterday. Chris and the Fire and Rescue, we've been working on trying to get other localities to see what they use and what we could come up with and, and, and work on that. As a, as a, just a board member, as an individual, first of all, I'm concerned that the taxpayer previously has no claim to equipment we've been buying as a board. And I don't think it's fair to the taxpayer. Any of us in this room, as a matter of fact, that's just not smart. I also, from a business point of view, and I'm going to go into that, know that it could be some hang-ups with the county's name on every car title or vehicle title. So I personally wouldn't have a problem if a document was developed or it was signed by the appropriate officials from the agency as well as probably the county attorney and the county administrator saying that we will get the county, when I say we, the county would uh, retain we, we would be able to get our money back if it was look, just what happened in my own district over at Alpha Vista. Yes, sir. And they had some issues that come up with uh, ambulances and, and the county had paid for some of them. It was it was kind of messy over that. And they they did they were wise enough to have some docu docu documents signed and we don't. So and I think it was a good lesson for all of us. We, we understand. We understand it. So I don't have a. Pro I, I personally don't have a problem with developing a document that would legally give us maybe, um, give us what we're entitled to out of the vehicle that was sold or whatever. That's just me. <coughs> I'm going to agree with that, uh, but I do want to point out to the fire association just for informational sake, we didn't just jerk this idea. It's actually been on the books, just not being implemented. And, and I don't mind telling you all, I'll share it with most of you anyway, I'm going down 58, knowing that we have a department that needs an avalanche. And I look over and Turbable has an avalanche that just bought something there with Laurel Grove on the side of it. But the county didn't put a dam in that MLA. I understand. I understand. But I'm just saying I don't want to be in that situation yes. down the road where we did put money in. Absolutely. And then we need one. I'm with we you. need one in Cool Branch. I'm for you. With and you. And Mike sells one to somebody outside the county. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. we need to be careful. About yes, it. if we put if the county puts money, absolutely. But in defense of Laurel Grove, the county did not put no money. Well, in. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't be critical of Laurel Grove. That was a system yeah. we were under. I mean, whether we put money in it or not, that was a system we were under then. We yes. just we just need to have a better system. system. So and I, I, to be per I would be perfectly honest with all of you while you're here in the room. You know, uh, I think we all have learned a valuable lesson over the last year. And in particular, I think one of the big turning points, Mike, was at the community meeting at your station that night. I think that was a turning point for us to say, we made mistakes, fire and rescues made mistakes, but we're better off working together and coming together and working to serve all of these citizens because that's that's what we want to do as a board that's what you all want to do as volunteers and I, I just want to commend you all on the cooperation and the collaborative effort I've seen in this county since that night and I tip my hat to each and every one of you <coughs> and I, I mean that sincerely Scott I tip my hat to you well, well thank you but it takes everyone and it takes, you know, great leadership and from y'all, from us, and just working with Chris, it's, it's been 
been great. And we try to come up with also specs on, we need to have a set of specs on what needs to be bought in this county. Not because Ringo or Cool Ranch wants to buy a new ambulance, a new fire truck, they go out here and buy whatever they want. We need to buy what needs to serve Pennsylvania County and Ringo. We need to buy what can serve the town of Hurt. If he carries that truck to Hurt, he can serve Hurt just as good as he can in Ringo. And that's what we're trying to work with Chris to make that happen, come up with a set of specs. I, I have one question about that. As we go forward, how would you all feel about uh, not the county necessarily being in, overly involved in what you're purchasing because y'all are going to find that, but I'm hoping that you all through Chris, through the county administrator, will be uh, keeping us in the loop on what you're purchasing because there can be economic developments that are coming that could affect the need for a particular area like well, big time. like Reman or something, you know, where we want to make wise decisions and we may know something that we're having to keep confidential because there's so much uh, requirements on the privacy side of that when you got a big company coming and they may have, have already made a, a, a verbal commitment that we know about and we know that that may change the need for your department. So yeah. if you work with us a little bit close on that aspect, we we really appreciate it, and I think in the long run, it's going to help us. Because we want to spec a fire truck that will put a fire out at that industrial park. We don't want a, a pump capacity that won't do that. And Chris can add some more on that. Uh, uh, we get some of the budget things and some of this dealt with over this week or next week. But, uh, my next thing is I'll be working the ordinance because we want to get that back in front of you in April. And uh, uh, once we can get that dealt with, uh, the next thing will be to start a strategic plan for fire and rescue. And uh, that with input from economic development, planning, and zoning, businesses, citizens, and so forth. But uh, that's, that's the next big step for us. So, well, you, you all heard in the meeting, we got 52 economic developments in the, in the hop. Doesn't mean we're going to get 52. I don't believe we can handle it if we got 52. But we do know some of them are, are have much more validity and more, much more likelihood than others. That's the only reason I'm saying that, Scott, is we want to be sure that, you know, you, you all don't buy something and say, golly, we should have did this if we have known that. So that's all I'm saying. I don't want you to, I don't want no fire talk with their own money or rescue squad to buy their own thing. And and that's what's been happening. In part, of, in part of when we in the economic development negotiations with companies, there's a lot of confidentiality involved. Yes, sir. So it's going to have to be a trust factor there. And probably Chris would be the He needs to be involved, we yes. We would have to involve him. But it could be a point where a large industry was going to locate and part of the negotiation we would have with them would be, you know, a piece of equipment. A lot of times they'll offer something. It, it's, it, ta it, ta it tax laws that get involved. It's all it's very complicated, but we may be able to negotiate a piece of equipment up front in the deal uh, through tax deferment, anything else, some other things that we can. And y'all not have paper. I wish you told me that. Well, in all seriousness, about why you bring that up? Because uh, I was going to speak last yeah last week I became. Chief Fire Marshal too, after he retired. So, um, one of the things we were going to want to do is get more involved when we have those businesses coming in, so we can talk to them on the fire safety issue. And uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Of one of the places where I used to work, uh, I, I looked at every plan that came in the county, any business. I reviewed it from the Fire Marshal, Fire Protection standpoint. Then I got one from Economic Development one day, and they said we need this reviewed in five days. I said, well, what is it? They said we can't tell you that. And I said, well, how can I review it if I don't know what they're making? <laughs> There's a difference between making mattresses and making gunpowder. You know, so I had to go through the hurdles to get where I could be told what it was. And once they told me what it was, it wasn't even anything really needed a fire to review. So, well, uh, I think probably we got down to the point we could have you sign a confidentiality agreement. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. then I'll bring you into the needle. Yes, sir. Well, I would think, you know, a lot of times these industries that come in, and like you say, you've got a bunch, but we deal with them down on our end, so you got six or seven good industries. I'm just saying, when they come in, 
you know, you look at what kind of war I've got coming to me, what kind of rail maybe I got, what's my tax base. Somewhere in them first four or five questions got to be the school system. What kind of fire and rescue protection do I have? Okay. And, and whether that be at Ringo or Mount Hermon or Blaze or Northern End, you know, these areas has got a lot of population. That means a lot of them. What you can tell them what you do have. All right. The last I think what we're telling you on the title is. Yeah, that's what I'm going back to. It's, we've never changed anything beforehand. It's been this discussion about putting the name of the county on the title. Yeah. So I know you're going to leave him. But anyway, they wanted to get their fire truck. We, we we're we telling you. We 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 what we just, I think what we're telling them is you don't need to put the county on that, but you won't have to sign the agreement. Well, as far as we're concerned, we, we would be glad to sign an agreement because if something happens to us, the county's going to get every truck we got, <laughs> and y'all can do what you need to with them. Because the county's got a lot of input out trucks. We might have one that I left at the county down, but the rest they didn't. But as far as my board of directors and everybody down there, and I hope that never happens to us, but if it does, it's loud, you know, it's, it's the counties to put wherever they need it. I hope to find somebody to come in and operate it. Um, but we have no heartburn at all signing a document saying if something happens, y'all. I, I don't want to hear about happening. That's what I'm going to do. He's going to get his truck within the week, yeah. within the five days. And, you know, we need we need to get the money released where we can pay that and, and all of that. So we need to work that out quickly. We've already answered that. So you can work with Mr. Hunt. Uh, Mr. Slamp off of this document. Okay. Well, thank you all for your time. I will let you. I think Chris has got something else to say. Um, but please support our budget. And thank you all. Chris has got a few more comments. Uh, just to uh, leave you all a couple things so you know. Uh, after our meeting this week in our uh, uh, training session, we did come together even more that uh, uh, I know the T. Fowler at the next Fire Rescue Association is going to appoint some committees. Um, one of the things we'll start working on is just so y'all know, because these, these may seem like little things, but they're really big things uh, for us. Uh, we have no fire ground identification system. Anymore. So you go out and see 50 people in different helmets and you have no clue who can do what. So we're developing some of that. We're going to come together with a committee on that. Uh, one, we're going to improve our dispatch procedures too. And uh, the other one, we're getting a committee on the recruiting and retention for volunteers. We're going to do that. that level, so. That's a big thing. Uh, every time we meet, we're going to try to come back out of that with a uh, team where we can standardize something. And I think that's really important that you all know that. Uh, so uh, I'm really pleased with that. Also, we're going to, uh, it's all right for me to tell, but Scott has been uh, working out something. They had a very, I won't say very old truck, but they had a truck that said we could replace it. And the one that they had, uh, we uh, found a very easy parking set because maybe get a year or two out of that truck. And we're going to help them out, and that's become a really good thing. And uh, very economically depressed area. We're just going to go that way. And I think it's very good. They're willing to do that. Is that okay? Not in Pennsylvania. Well, it's, 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 it's a, what, 80? It's an 88 Chevrolet yeah. engine yeah. that's got very few miles on it. And it's a, it's a really good fire truck. And um, we can notify some departments that was in need. Uh, and rather than see us selling it and get a little nothing for it and see it run up down the road hauling trees or something, we'd rather see it stay a fire truck. Right. So we talked to them folks out there, and, and, and like um, Chris said, they don't have a lot. Yeah, so we just, just probably they've been taking accounts, you think they want to know. We're going to donate the truck to them, yeah. ready to go, so they'll have them help them a good truck. Um, when we get out a new truck, we're taking two trucks out of service. We're going to take one in the place, too. So that's the plan. The other little crash truck we're going to sell. <laughs> which you ain't talking a lot about you gonna get, but we thought it was a good idea to to help another department out and maybe that would get other folks to thinking about things like that. So what you said, Mr. Warner, these guys come together quite a bit lately and uh, they're making my job a lot easier. I like that. So till some people call me and talk to me every day. <laughs> 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 But uh, I do appreciate y'all giving us time. I appreciate Mr. Scarce coming this weekend to uh, sit down with us. He got to hear some of the Can I have to make him brunch next time. Eight o'clock is too early. Tonight. <laughs> 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 I, I think nine is too good. Come on, we had all those donuts, Ron. Yeah. Can I answer any questions for you guys? Want to hear anything else? Then?
Uh, so you, I just want to go back to the mask issue. I knew that was an important mm -hmm. thing. Do you think you're going to have the grant money available for that? Well, no, okay, okay. So the money we put in the budget was to do air bottles, which uh, we had several of those, about 90 of them going in. But uh, some of those folks have been able to find grant money for that. Mm -hmm. So with our CFP that gets approved, I talked to Mr. Smith mm -hmm. about being able to use it for the mask. Okay. I mean, it's all for air pack stuff. And so far, we're, we should be able to do that. Now, that's a, that's a big issue. We really need to, I, I, you know, I have a price to get, but I think we'll be close to being able to fix that. And I've talked to a couple other departments who have some uh, CIP monies that they could use now, and I'm going to meet with them one-on-one -on -one, try to get them, because they have very few masks that need that, so they could do that now. So trying to get some of that taken care of, because that is a health and safety issue. Yeah, yeah. We're done. I guess we'll, Thank you. we'll move forward. I guess uh, any other questions before we adjourn? No question, but just a comment. Uh, you know, I'm new to the board, but I've seen great things in a short amount of time. So, and that doesn't happen by chance. So just congratulations and good job. Keep up the good work. Um, just quickly, I think everybody in here, the county staff, the board, and y'all all agree the turning point for this was when the recommendation come out of that study to hire a person as a point man on a day to day basis, which is Chris. We did it in 06, though. Well, I won't order more than 06. And I don't think anybody in this room was. So we, we got it done. So I'm, I'm happy. Of, I think we're moving in the right direction. You had hair in 06, guys. All right, we just need a motion to adjourn, then we'll pick up the work session after this. All right, I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All right. All right. So you need to come up here, Dr. Bob.